Some of the reasons why students get overwhelmed, or at least maybe I noticed this myself when I was preparing, is that... Adam, back for another MCAT podcast. How are you doing today? Uh, I'm great. I'm excited to dive into some content. Yes, sir. So we're going to continue our breakdown of Blueprint MCAT, full length one, bio, biochem, passage 10. Uh, it's a mouthful. Uh, <laughs> remember, you can get full length one for free by signing up for a free account at blueprintmcat.com. And then come hang out with us. Passage 10. Before we jump in and, and start reading this, actually, let's let's hear your thought process on how to approach passage-based questions or mm -hmm. a passage in general. Yeah. So one of the techniques that I love uh, when attacking passages is to take it paragraph by paragraph. Um, a lot of people uh, fall into the trap of over-highlighting or sort of picking out minor details because they try to pick out the important pieces you know, as they're going. But I really think uh, a really effective strategy is to go paragraph by paragraph. So you read a paragraph and then you take maybe just you know five men five seconds to do a sort of like mental accounting. Um, see what were the important uh, tidbits. Maybe you know distill out the main idea and then move on to the next paragraph. So that's generally how I attack uh, passages. Awesome. Um, all right. Well, let's go ahead and and jump into our passage here today. So. Elevated low-density lipoprotein, LDL, cholesterol, is a risk factor for both al Alzheimer's disease and cardiovascular disease. So I'm, I'm noting some of these acronyms here. Suggesting a common lipid-sensitive step in their pathogenesis. Previous results show that AD and CVD also share a cell cycle defect, chromosome instability, and up to 30% aneuploidy in neurons in AD, and in smooth muscle cells, in atherosclerotic plaque in CVD. Well, that was a mouthful there. <laughs> <laughs> Specific, uh, fortunately, you don't have to read out loud on the MCAT. Yes. Specific, <laughs> Specific degeneration of aneuploid neurons accounts for 90% of neuronal loss in the AD brain, indicating that aneuploidy underlies AD neurodegeneration. Mouse models of AD develop similar aneuploidy through amyloid beta inhibition of specific motor proteins and consequent disruption of mitotic spindles. All right. Ooh. So yeah, a lot here, a pretty, pretty dense first paragraph. Um, hopefully that's not a turnoff for a lot of students. Um, I know, especially towards the end of a section, this is passage 10, a pretty dense passage can be a little scary, but um, let's sort of try to just boil this down to some important pieces. So yeah. we know we're working with you know, lipoproteins here. I always, I almost always highlight acronyms here. So we have our LDL, our AD for Alzheimer's, di Alzheimer's disease and uh, CVD for cardiovascular. We know that the AD and CVD, they're sharing a cell cycle defect. So I'm, I'm definitely going to be highlighting chromosome instability. That seems like an important point to me here. Um, and that's showing up in this conversation about aneuploidy that we get in sort of the rest of this paragraph here. So chromosome instability, aneuploidy in neurons seems important. Um, and then here at the end, we get this conversation about, um, you know, amyloid beta and uh, how they're inhibiting specific motor proteins. So those are pretty much my main highlights, just the acronyms, uh, noting this relationship between ADCVD and the chromosome instability and aneuploidy. And then I think maybe amyloid beta might be important, but um, I'm definitely going to keep all those things in mind as I'm reading the rest of these paragraphs. What's a, a trick that you've seen potentially, or just a mindset? Because you, you mentioned, hopefully, it's not a turnoff. And I think mm -hmm. like fifty percent of the MCAT is going into a passage or discrete questions and not being immediately turned off, going, yep. "Oh my gosh, this is going to be horrible." Yeah. Um, so I actually find that sometimes, uh, just like maybe one or two seconds to do a little mental reset between passages can be helpful. Um, especially some of, some of the reasons why students get overwhelmed, or at least maybe I noticed this myself when I was preparing, is that passages can differ so widely. So you, see, you sort of almost get into a flow, like understanding a passage about like physics and, you know, I don't know, like fluid dynamics or something. Um, and then you switch to, a, to a pa another passage and it's entirely different. 
Um, and almost that sort of the switch up can be um, enough to turn you off. So if that's something that students are noticing and that's something that I had, uh, doing like a quick maybe three second, you know, like close your eyes, reset, forget which, not forget what you just did, but sort of, you know, uh, acknowledge that it's in the past and move forward. Um, yeah. that, that's my advice. It's so important. That, that kumbaya stuff. Got to kumbaya. <laughs> be one with the MCAT. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. All right. So researchers aimed to investigate whether lipoproteins and cholesterol induce chromosomal missegregation. All right. So we have a research question here. Definitely noting that. First, metaphase chromosome analysis and fluorescence in situ DNA hybridization. FISH, that's uh, a nice little acronym there were used to determine the level of trisomy 16 in the spleen cells of mice fed a high cholesterol diet, HCD, relative to mice fed regular chow, RC. And then we have the results. So I always loved uh, to see that there's a figure representing what was said in a paragraph because really I don't need to worry about distilling it and putting it in my own words because the figure sort of does that for me here. Mm, yeah. So we're looking at this figure. We see the relationship between, re or the uh, you know comparison between regular chow and uh, the high cholesterol diet mice, uh, and we see the difference represented in the percentage of trisomy 16 here. Mm -hmm. And we we do see that it is significant because we see this p value represented here is 0 0.02, which is less than our you know the the standard value of 0 0.05, which designates our significance. Okay. Great. So let's move to this next one. Then to establish that lipoproteins and cholesterol were directly, directly responsible for the aneuploidy observed in the cholesterol fed mouse, researchers analyzed the chromosomes of human telomerase reverse transcriptase, HTERT, cells in culture after, after exposure to various lipids. Okay. Actively growing HTERT cells were treated with 20 micrograms per milliliter of LDL, oxidized LDL, or high-density lipoprotein for 48 hours, then arrested in metaphase and stained to reveal levels of trisomies 12 and 21. Awesome. Okay, so we have another sort of experimental setup here, this time um, with HTERT and exposure to different uh, lipids, and then we're seeing how that affects the percentage of trisomies, either 12 or 21. Okay. Noted that there. And then finally, we have another little sentence and uh, figure here at the end. Finally, researchers tested the effect of ethanol on levels of trisomy 21 in ox LDL, LDL, and HDL treated HTERT cells. And we have our figure here at the end. Awesome. Okay. So this figure at the end here, it's it's definitely relating back to figure two. There's We're, we're worried about HTERT cells and the percentage of trisomy here. Uh, we see that the addition of ethanol is actually reducing the amount of trisomy 21 that we're seeing uh, just in those LDL um, in those LDL species, though, not with the HDL. This this for some students is a good passage because they love all the graphs. A bad passage because they hate graphs and they don't know how to <laughs> interpret them or look at them or extract the information needed. Um, is there a trick to getting? good with reading graphs quickly? Yeah, so there are definitely some, uh, you know, important things that you should always try to pull out of figures. You always want to be looking for, you know, like what's being measured. So what's the dependent variable? What's the independent variable? What's being changed? Uh, you're always wanting to look for significance because that's where a lot of questions are going to, you know, boil down to like, what's the significant difference mm -hmm. shown in the figures. So always be looking for p-values. Um, in terms of just like, you know, comprehension, make sure that you're looking at the legends if there is one, uh, like in figure two, you know, it's important to recognize uh, the different trends with trisomy either 21 or 12. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just be making sure that you're understanding all the components of the figure first, uh, identifying what's dependent variable, what's independent, and then just try to recognize what the trend is. Uh, something that can be helpful for a lot of students is just trying to put it into their own words if just looking at a figure uh, is sort of scary or maybe not even scary, but just, you know, sort of like there's a mental block there, like say figure one, for instance, um, you can just put it in your own, own words saying, all right, mice with high calorie, how, ooh, geez, can I, 
high cholesterol diet are going to have a higher percentage of trisomy 21 than mm. the regular child. Just something sim simple like that uh, can be effective to, you know, sort of get the main message from the figure yeah. and not be scared away by it. Okay. Seems easy enough. <laughs> so mm -hmm. it's harder in practice, but seems easy enough. Certainly so. All right. So I'll start here with question 53. Mm -hmm. In cells with elevated low density uh, lipoprotein levels, ethanol has been shown to act directly on these lipoprotein molecules in a way that decreases their trisomy inducing effects. On the basis of this information compared with untreated H. tert cells, H. tert cells incubated with ethanol alone would most likely A, have a higher probability of displaying trisomy 21, B, have a lower probability of displaying trisomy 21, C, have a similar probability of displaying trisomy 21, or D, have a higher probability of display, displaying trisomy 21 than H. tert cells incubated with HDL and ethanol. Mm -hmm. All right, so I go straight to, ooh, I remember where this was talked about. This was talked about in the bottom here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this figure three. Certainly. So in cells with elevated LDL lip lipoprotein levels. So elevated LDL... Um, so we look at those LDL ones. Ethanol has been shown to act directly on these lipoprotein molecules in a way that decreases their trisomy inducing effects, right? That's exactly what this chart is showing us. Yep. On the basis of the, this information compared with untreated H. tert cells, H. tert cells with in incubated with ethanol alone untreated H. tert cells. Untreated. Um, all right. So if it was just these and not LDL or HDL. Oh, man. So this is interesting because the graph shows us H. tert, but without any ethanol with just H. tert. And so it's making us guess um, mm -hmm. what's going to happen. We have LDL treated, uh, the oxidative LDL uh, treated, LDL treated and HDL treated H tert cells. That's These are all H tert cells without H tert labeled on there. So that number one yeah. is confusing potentially for students. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> but then you get to H tert with ethanol alone. So it'd be H tert. So if you add another one here, H tert plus ethanol, what's going to happen? How do you how do you know? Because it doesn't tell you. All right. So higher probability. So all of these are lower, right? So mm -hmm. all of these are lower, 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 except HDL, although it's very minimally lower, but but not significant. Yeah. So a higher probability doesn't make sense, right? Why would ethanol obviously uh, all of a sudden be higher when all of these are lower? So I'm going to get rid of A just for that reason. Nice. Uh, hopefully go there. Have a lower probability of displaying trisomy 21. That seems good. Uh, have a similar probability. Well, LDL was lower HDL was very similar. Um, so I don't know about those. And then D, have a higher probability of displaying trisomy 21 than H tert cells incubated with HDL and ethanol. So I don't know why all of a sudden they're throwing in this HDL one. They're saying you would have H tert and it would be higher. I have no idea what that. Uh, so I'm getting rid of this because just it adds so many other variables that I'm like, I don't want to <laughs> think about that. And it seems like it's it's making me think about it in a way that it didn't really give me information that I can make that decision. Um, so uh, I don't I don't know. I'm just gonna say B. Either. I'm gonna say B because because ethanol reduced everywhere. <laughs> just wasn't super significant in HDL. <laughs> so what do we think? 
All right. So I do really like uh, your thought process there. You went right back to, um, you know, exactly where we want to look for a question that's, you know, concerning uh, this, this ethanol contribution here. Um, so you eliminated A and D, which absolutely, I, th I think is like a great uh, starting point here, because just like you said, the addition of ethanol only is, is decreasing the probability that we see in this, in this figure three here. So a and D, uh, we can sort of eliminate because they don't really sort of match the trend that we get here. Um, but now all we see in figure three is that the addition of ethanol is decreasing trisomy probability when we're working with LDLs. So we can't necessarily say right away um, that it's going to have the same effect with the HTERT because we actually see with the HDL that it, it basically has no effect, right? There's no stick, there's no statistical significance between these values here. The yeah, HDL. yeah, but but Adam, I have good eyesight. It's definitely lower. <laughs> it's lower. Yeah. So <laughs> we, uh, you know, on the MCAT, you're not going to be expected to have uh, uh, insane vision and be able to, to find, see these, you know, these few, uh, you know, mm, tiny discrepancies uh, between the values here. So honestly, in my mind, I'm basically equating uh, HDL and the HDL with ethanol as as the same values here. Okay. Um, so. The, so between B and C, that, that's like a great starting point. You've already given yourself a 50-50 shot um, by just seeing the general trend of like what adding ethanol does. Yeah. Um, I'm the king of getting it to 50-50 and then still doing <laughs> the wrong one. <laughs> um, so in this case, you did pick the wrong one, yep. um, unfortunately. But the, the, ra the rationale for understanding why it's similar probability is because we see the addition of ethanol, it, it can't move it like below this, it's sort of like baseline almost like we see here h tert is sort of like the the base value of percent of trisomy and we don't know that ethanol is going to have an effect in untreated h tert cells yeah um because we only see the effect with the ldls and not with the hdls so we can't assume that the ethanol is going to have a diminishing effect so essentially we we're just going to have to go with um you know assuming that possibly the the effect of the ethanol is canceling out the effect of the LDL. So we know that when LDL, you know, are, is present in high levels, we get an elevated probability of the trisomy 21. Yeah. And we only see the decrease with the ethanol. So the ethanol perhaps isn't actually, you know, like directly causing a decrease in the percentage of trisomy. It's possibly just canceling out what the LDL is causing an increase in the percent of trisomy 21. So yeah. you, ser you sort of like, following my logic there, it, it's like, uh, it's sort of countering the action of the LDL rather yeah. than doing something directly itself. Yeah, makes sense. So what I'm taking away from this, this passage, this question is, I can have a bad diet, but as long as I drink, I'm canceling out the bad diet. Um, is that is that the takeaway? No, bad takeaway. Not All right. not entirely sure that that would be a great conclusion. Um, All right, but you, you'll have to come to your own conclusions. <laughs> That's I for guess. another another study. <laughs> All right, so at least, outside the scope, <laughs> at, at least I got A and D out of there with with some logic, uh, and, and I I think I was just trying to be like, oh well, it's lower, therefore it's lower. But mm -hmm. yeah, don't don't read into that too much. Yeah, it definitely is. B was definitely um sort of like the convenient answer, if you will. Uh, yeah. Because we see, you know, this trend, you know, the decrease in trisomy percentage is like pretty obvious with the LDLs. And you you kind of just sort of like want that to continue. That's sort of like a natural like, yep. you know, uh, inclination that we have. But yeah. but yeah. Makes sense. Although when if I were to use my my bottom blue part of the screen as measurement, right, the the <laughs> HDL with alcohol with with ethanol is is the same baseline as the h chert so i was comparing hdl with hdl plus ethanol mm -hmm. when what i should have been comparing was the first column that first bar and the last bar and they're exactly yeah. the same therefore yep. similar so there mm -hmm. there was my mistake all right mm -hmm. So this is a good trick, uh, folks, if you're out there, you can use kind of your scroll wheel and go, you can measure these across with that, that bottom blue bar. Very nifty. Very nifty. Yeah. All right. All right. Question 54. Why don't you go ahead and read that one? All right. Paragraph one mentions that aneuploidy in Alzheimer's disease may result from disruption 
of the mitotic spindle. This apparatus is composed of what structures? <laughs> All right. So we have um, a pseudo discrete here. This is mm-hmm. obviously not in the passage at all. It's just something you have to remember how mitosis and all these spindles and all this works. So interchoice A, microfilaments, interchoice B, intermediate filaments, interchoice C, microtubules, and D, myosin filaments. And if I remember correctly, it's microtubules, but that's a long time ago. Uh, so you do remember correctly. It is microtubules. So that's a great. Uh, how long ago did you uh, <laughs> did you study this? I'm I'm old. So so it was a while ago. <laughs> yeah. So that's great. Rem- uh, great memory there. Yeah. The mitotic the mitotic spindle is composed of microtubules. Those are the ske- the cytoskeletal um, components made of tubulin. Um, our intermediate filaments. I always remember they're sort of like structural elements. Um, and they play a role in like cell adhesion too. Um, mm. And then the microfilaments and myosin, those are, you know, sort of like more related to muscle and muscle contraction. So I'm sort of ruling those out right away. But yeah, you could get there just with, you know, the core um, or just like straight up knowing like, oh yeah, okay, my mitotic spindle is made of microtubules, got there. Yep. Um, you could also use a little bit of elimination strategy just by knowing what these other um, filaments are for. Cool. All right, feeling good about myself now. Let's uh, get knocked back down to... Very, very <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, question 55, high levels of LDL and ox LDL increase the proportion of cholesterol in cell membranes. If the trisomy 21 data in figure two can be attributed to the effect of cholesterol on these membranes, which of the following statements is most likely true? All right, so I'm going to show figure two here. A, H-tert cells treated with ox LDL display more rigid membranes than H-tert cells treated with LDL. Untreated H-tert cells display more rigid membranes than H-tert cells treated with LDL. At moderate to high temperatures, ethanol increases membrane fluidity. Or D, H-tert cells simultaneously exposed to HDL and LDL display increased membrane fluidity relative to untreated cells. All right, so we're in figure two. Right off the bat, I want to get rid of Andrew choice C because ethanol isn't part of figure two. It's part of figure three. And so it seems like they're throwing in some extra stuff. It also doesn't talk about... Um, unless I'm missing something, it doesn't talk about heat at all. So I'm going to get rid of C just because it seems like it's not part of the the passage here at all. Um, so the, the question is here, let's, let's rephrase the question. So high levels of LDL and ox LDL increase proportion of cholesterol in cell. Okay. How do we know that? Is it just telling us that as an extra piece of data? Um, it seems like it's extra piece of data. Um, so if trisomy 21 data in figure two can be attributed to the effect of cholesterol on these membranes, okay. So we have ox LDL in figure two uh, with trisomy 21 is the lighter gray box here. Obviously increased significantly from just plain untreated H-tert. Same thing with LDL, same thing with uh, HDL is not increased. Um, Okay, just reorienting there. So H-tert cells treated with ox LDL display more rigid membranes than H-tert cells treated with LDL. So the question is, what does a rigid membrane have to do with anything? I don't know. (laughs) Darn it. Um, Is a rigid membrane, like, are we supposed to assume a rigid membrane means, like, obviously that mitosis doesn't happen appropriately and that's what causes the increase in trisomy? That's what I'm assuming they're trying to say. Uh, So H-tert with ox LDL, more than, okay, potentially makes sense. You have more trisomy 21. Um but they're not connected in terms of 
um, significance bars here. So I don't know. Untreated H chert. Back to the bar graph. Display more rigid membranes than H chert cells treated with LDL. So again, I don't know. That's a different path. The question comes down to what does the rigidity have to do with it? And this is a pseudo discrete question as well. Yes, that's a, um, that's a great uh, recognition there. <laughs> so there's uh, some relevance to the rigidity. And yeah. The components. Yeah. Uh, H chert cells simultaneously exposed to HDL and LDL display increased membrane fluidity. We don't have that data. So I'm going to cross out D. I don't think we have that data uh, because we don't have that data. So really the question is, is rigidity... Does rigidity increase trisomy or decrease trisomy? My guess is that rigidity just seems like, oh, that's not good. You have a rigid membrane. Right? <laughs> Cells are very squishy and and can pop around and do lots of things, I think. Uh, so I'm going to say rigidity is bad and therefore say A is the answer. So I do like a lot of the <laughs> logic uh, that went on there. Um, I will go ahead and like reveal the curtain right away. It is not answer option A. <laughs> but uh, let's talk through it here. So high levels of LDL and ox LDL increase the proportion of cholesterol in cell membranes. So do you remember like the relevance of uh, cholesterol in cell membranes and how that, and how that um, affects rigidity at all? No, obviously I don't. Uh, <laughs> I, I think like cell, we need cholesterol in the cell membranes to hold it together and and I'm mm -hmm. assuming that's what they mean by rigid, like it keeps the cell together. Um, but when I see rigidity, I think of like, oh, it's too stiff, then mitosis can't happen appropriately. <laughs> and what I typically do when I answer these questions is I go way down a rabbit hole that I don't need to go mm -hmm. down. Yeah, I, I think uh, that might have been the case here as well. The, I, you did recognize that like the important uh, part here was like recognizing uh, how is you know rigidity uh, related to this whole conversation about LDLs and like cholesterol. Mm -hmm. um, because you know we see it in every answer option. Uh, a is saying more rigid membranes. B is saying more rigid membranes. C is talking about membrane fluidity, and so is D. And so that's definitely like, if you weren't sure where to start, um, you might come back to the question stem and be like, okay, uh, how does this little tidbit of information they give me like relate to uh, membrane rigidity? Rigidity, please. <laughs> um, yeah, and so just I guess this is some outside information that you're gonna need to bring into this. Uh, passage, but cholesterol in cell membranes at uh, it's a bi-regulator of membrane fluidity. So at lower temperatures, cholesterol is going to increase membrane fluidity, and at high temperatures, it's going to decrease it or make it more rigid. Mm. And so, because the question is saying if the trisomy twenty-one data in Figure two, so you know the relationship of uh, more uh, a higher percentage of trisomy with the LDL. If that, if that increase in percentage of trisomy can be attributed to the effect of cholesterol on these membranes, aka um, cholesterol making membranes more rigid, uh, that's also a bit of outside information you need to know that at like physiological temperatures, cholesterol makes membranes more rigid, then we are going to like from there, it's a lot easier to sort of adjudicate between the answers mm. because we're recognizing they're saying, okay, um, the increase in percentage of trisomy in the LDLs is due to the fact that the cholesterol is making the membranes more rigid. Okay. So from there, we, you know, we, uh, you know, address e each of our answer options. You picked A, um, but unfortunately in A, there's like, we, we don't really see any significant difference between the ox LDL and LDL um, values here. So for that reason, we're kind of throwing our answer option A. Um, oh yeah, I didn't even I didn't even recognize that part of the answer choice. I was mm -hmm. comparing ox LDL to H tert untreated, not ox LDL to LDL. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, that that automatically was like, oh, that I made a mistake there. Mm -hmm. No biggie though. Um, and then here we see untreated H tert display more rigid membranes. Well, this is actually like the exact opposite of this like tidbit that we're given in, you know, the, the, the question stem here where it's telling us that more or LDL increases cholesterol, making the cell membranes more rigid. So mm. we throw out B because it's opposite of, you know, the sort of the conclusion they're telling us here. 
uh, answer option C. So you, you threw out answer option C because uh, it wasn't related to figure two. And generally, like that's a good idea, but this wasn't really asking us to analyze figure two or make like conclusions from figure two. It was saying, what is the conclusion if figure two was attributed to that effect of cholesterol? So mm. sort of all, all the, the mention of figure two is just really to tell us that um, the change in trisomy is trisomy percentage is, is due to the rigidity of the membrane. Mm -hmm. And so now we're just trying to, once we recognize that it's not really like just analyzing figure two, we can sort of answer which, you know, or like see which statement is true just on sort of a, uh, we don't have to analyze it, you know, like just figure two is all I'm saying. Um, yeah. And so we looked here at moderate to high temperatures, ethanol increases membrane fluidity. So we know that ethanol when added to those LDLs, it decreased the effect yeah. of uh, LDL, so it, it dropped that percentage of trisomy. And so if the increase in trisomy that LDL showed us was due to increasing membrane fluidity, we know that ethanol counters that activity. C does make sense because yeah. at moderate to high temperatures, which is our physiological temperature, so to speak, um, ethanol increases membrane fluidity, which is the opposite of what LDL is doing for us. And so that makes sense. If ethanol is doing the opposite of what the LDL is doing, then it's sort of canceling out that effect, like, you know, it's sort of the verbiage that we used a couple questions ago when we were analyzing how ethanol is affecting um, this percentage of trisomy. It's sort yeah, it's doing the opposite of what the LDL is doing. So the LDL is increasing membrane fluidity, which gives us a higher percentage of trisomy 21. Yep. But the ethanol, on the other hand, is, is increasing the membrane fluidity and, and <sighs> you know, counteracting it. All right. Well, so tough one. What, for sure. what all of this comes down to is the MCAT is a reading test. And I did not <laughs> read this appropriately because the question specifically says, hey, if what you're seeing here is because of cholesterol on the membranes, right? And I didn't read that for what it was. I was just like, mm -hmm. let me re-remember what figure two tells me and then yeah. see what the answer choices are. So mm -hmm. It, the the question is saying, hey, let me let me force some information into your head about what you're seeing here, and then based on that, which one of these conclusions can you come to? Which mm -hmm. also includes information from Figure Three, but I was so stuck on Figure Two, and it's it's a reading test. You got to read. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that that is um that's definitely uh sort of like I don't know if you want to say like a trap that students fall into, but um, because it, it is like a general good piece of advice when you're asked about something specific in a question stem to go back to in the passage and sort of, you know, like root your, um, answer in the passage material. Mm. Um, but yeah, this, this question specifically because of the wording, like you said, it wasn't limiting us just to figure two and like analyzing based on figure two. It was saying generally what is true given something that explains the results in figure two. Yep. So like I said, felt good about last question and brought <laughs> right back down here. That one was a very tough question, <laughs> I have to say. All right, 56, go ahead. All right, so ox LDL most likely forms through the reaction of LDL with what? And we get our four answers here. All hmm. right. So answer choice a free radicals b fadh2 and nadh c hydrogen gas or d saturated fatty acid tails <sighs> it's oxidized free radicals is always like the easy like oh free radicals that causes all of our problems uh, <laughs> so it's like answer choice a is like <laughs> that that seems too too straightforward too easy i don't know but then you go, okay, FADH, NADH, I have no idea what those have to do with this, but uh, hey, whatever, they're, they're part of lots of fun things, lots of our cycles that we have to memorize as pre-meds. Um, <laughs> hydrogen gas, uh, I don't know, whatever. Um, and then saturated fatty acid tails, you're like, oh, saturated fat, that's bad for your body too. So I'm between <laughs> A and D just because, oh, those things are bad for your body. Um, uh -oh. So I like A just because free radicals is always a, a fun answer. 
Yeah. So the key to answering <laughs> this question is, you know, recognizing like what is the difference between LDL and Ox and Ox LDL. And of course, it's you know the fact that o the fact that Ox LDL is oxidized. Mm -hmm. um, so so in these answer options, we're looking for which one is going to be capable of oxidizing LDL. Yep. And the only oxidizing agent here is free radicals. So you are correct in picking <laughs> um, A. Not necessarily just for the fact that it's you know a bad thing, um, but uh, for the fact that none of the other answer options are going to be able to oxidize. So FADH2 and NADH are the reduced uh, forms of their you know of their respective molecules, and so they are going to tend to serve as reducing agents rather than being able to oxidize things. Um, hydrogen gas is also um, a reductant, and it does not oxidize uh, saturated fast saturated fatty acid tails of course is um not going to act as an oxidizing agent so we're left yeah. with our our free radicals there so I'm telling you free radicals it was just an easy one <laughs> you think of oxidative stress you think of free radicals I'm like oh that is yep. the answer well so. it served you well in this case <laughs> that's certainly the case here. i watched i watched enough infomercials about getting rid of free radicals <laughs> all right that's the end of passage 10 so a, a couple uh, pseudo discretes that i did decent on and then the rest i did terrible on so <laughs> the moral of the story is learn how to read and understand what the stupid mcat is trying to tell you